Every now and then I like to change it up on here and do a project using Raspberry Pi or Arduino, but isn't necessarily gaming related. It's been a long time since I did that, so today I want to show you an Arduino project that I did earlier this year. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you might remember seeing me work on this a few months ago. But let me give you a little background of what it is and why I made it. Earlier this year, a local nonprofit asked me if I could help them with the quiz tournament that they were putting on as part of a Harry Potter convention. They just wanted a simple buzzer system, maybe with some wand-shaped buzzers. I couldn't just leave it at that, so instead what I made is an Arduino-powered, motion-activated buzzer system that makes it look like the two contestants are dueling with their wands. When a question is asked, whoever flicks their wand first will trigger a burst of light from that side of the stage, along with the sound effect to make it look like they cast a spell on the other contestant. I was really happy with how it turned out. If you do these kinds of projects and you know that they don't always turn out the way that you imagine in your head, so it's always really satisfying when they do. Now, I realize that this is a project with a very specific use case that not a lot of people are going to want to copy verbatim, but I think that there are enough interesting parts and concepts at play here that can be used in all kinds of different projects. So I thought it would be worth at least giving an overview of what parts I use and how it all fits together, and maybe give you some inspiration for your own projects. And as usual, check the link in the description for wiring diagrams, a list of all the parts that I used, and all the code that I used as well. So I'll start off with the wands. As you can see, I've got a 3D printed enclosure for it. Kind of chunky for a wand, but not bad considering how much time I had to make it and how many components I had to fit inside of here. So the back of it screws off, and then there's a little tray that slides out that actually houses all of the components. Driving everything, I've got an Adafruit M0 Express, a TP4056 based battery charger. There are a ton of chargers based off of this chip. You see me use them in some different projects. I've got an accelerometer module based on the MPU6500 chip. It uses the I2C interface to talk to the Arduino board. We've got a little transceiver module. These are awesome and cheap. It's like 10 bucks for a pack of six of them. They use the SPI interface to communicate with the Arduino. And if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the same interface that you've seen me use on several different screens in various different projects. Got a 14500 type lithium ion battery, a couple of SPDT switches. This one is hooked up to the enable pin on the Arduino to turn it on and off. And then this one here on the other side is hooked up to a pin on the Arduino to select between which side of the stage this particular wand is meant to be used on. And everything just kind of slides back into there. You can charge it through the micro USB port on the end. And I've also got an LED on the end that lights up briefly whenever you flick it hard enough to trigger it. So here's the host remote. This is what the person actually running the quiz show is holding. It's got a 1200 milliamp hour battery an Adafruit Feather M0 Express, another one of those transceiver modules, got four of these large colored tactile switches, and then another SPDT switch for powering on and off. Their Feather line of boards are really handy, by the way, because they've got a JST connector right on the board, along with some charging circuitry, so you don't need a separate charging board, you can charge it directly through the micro USB port. So with this, they're able to pause the game, in other words, not accept any input from the wand for a given period, indicate that an answer was correct, and incorrect and then ready the next question so they have to push that to actually start accepting input from the wands and then finally we've got the base station this is what controls the strip of LEDs and it's also got a headphone jack on it to output the sound inside I've got another Adafruit board this is a Feather 32U4 basic another transceiver module and an Adafruit audio FX soundboard these things are really cool. You can see that it's got a micro USB port on the end here. If you plug that into your computer, it will just show up as a mass storage device. And you can just drag and drop audio files onto it. And then it's got all these input pins on the side. You can hook them up to buttons or switches or whatever kind of trigger you want to use to trigger different sound effects. And you can indicate which sound file goes to which input by just renaming the files. Really clever little board and easy to use. But instead of hooking it up to buttons or switches, I've got it hooked up to some output pins on this Arduino. So whenever this board receives a message from a wand or from the host remote through this transceiver, it can trigger a sort of button press to this board through these output pins. And then I've also got another one of the pins hooked up to control the LED strip. And speaking of LEDs, this is the strip that I used for it. It's got two sets of wires, one for power, it needs 15 volts, and then another set for actually controlling it with the Arduino. It uses WS2812B addressable LEDs, super easy to control with an Arduino, I'll show you that in just a minute. 
And obviously I modeled 3D printing cases for all of these. I used the palette from Mosaic Manufacturing to do multicolored printing on these, works really well. So that's about it for the hardware. Now let me jump over to the computer and show you real quick how the Arduino code works. Okay, so just like the hardware, I'm not gonna go super into detail about every single line of code, but I'll give you an overview of how it works. If you wanna download it and check it out yourself, this will all be on GitHub, so look at the link in the description for that. I think I commented it pretty well, so it should be pretty self-explanatory. All right, so we've got three Arduino sketches. We've got one for the wand, the base, and the host remote. And the way they all work together is the wand and the host remote send simple messages to the base station. You could make those messages anything that you want them to be, I'm just using numbers to keep it nice and simple. So I'll start with the wand. Everything here at the top is just a setup, defining things like our radio and the accelerometer and which pins we're gonna be using. The setup function automatically gets called right when you power on the Arduino board. So within there, that's where we're initializing our radio and the accelerometer, those kinds of things. Right after the setup function finishes at the bottom, it automatically goes into this loop function and it just keeps doing this over and over again. That's just kind of a built-in feature of Arduino apps. They call the setup function and then they immediately jump into this loop, which is where you'll do things like read from sensors, update any LEDs or anything like that. So within here, we're just updating the accelerometer, checking to see if they flicked the wand hard enough. And if they did, then we go ahead and send a flick message to the base station and flash the LED. Those two functions are right here. Really simple, all it does is check which wand this is set to with that switch and then sends that number as a message over the radio. The do flash function, what that does is set the LED to full brightness and then fade it out. The host remote sketch is pretty similar. Again, we've got all the setup stuff at the top telling it which pins we're gonna be using and defining what messages we'll be sending to the base station. In the setup function, we're initializing the radio and setting up the pins for all the buttons. Then down here in our loop function, we're checking to see if any of those buttons were pressed. And if they were, we flash the onboard LED so that we know that it's working. And then we send the corresponding message over the radio. So this send message function is defined up here and it just accepts a number in as a parameter and sends that over the radio. And then finally, the base station sketch. It's quite a bit longer than the other two, but most of that is just for controlling the LED strip. So again, in our setup function, we're initializing things like the LED strip and the radio. Then from there, it automatically jumps down into the loop function. And there, all that we're doing is checking to see if our radio has anything for us to read. And then down here, we're deciding what we actually need to do based on what that message is. First, we check for all the messages that can come from the host remote. So if the host said that they wanted to pause the game, then we'll set the current state to paused. That just means that we're not gonna accept any input from either of the wands, basically. Question ready, that means that they push the ready button, and that means that we're ready to go ahead and start watching for either of the wands to send a message to us. If they pushed the correct answer button, then we call the correct answer function. That's up here. So what it does first is it triggers the pin that plays the correct answer sound. So this activate sound function is up here. All that it does is bring the correct pin high for 150 milliseconds and then brings it low again to act like you had pushed a button. So now here's when we're actually doing something with the LED strip. And it's a little more complicated than it would be otherwise and that's because the way I have it set up, I'm assuming that the person using this will have the LED strip folded in half to make it quite a bit brighter. I'm not gonna go too much into detail on this. Um, it's kind of tedious, uh, but all that it does is it starts at one side of the LED strip and lights up actually two LEDs, but they look like they're in the same spot. It's just quite a bit brighter that way and moves it back and forth across the LED strip. We start with a hue of zero and just increase it every time that we use it. So that'll produce kind of a nice rainbow effect going back and forth. And so then the last option that we can receive from the host remote is incorrect answer. And that does exactly the same thing, except it triggers the incorrect sound pin. And then we set the hue to zero and we don't change it. And that'll make it just show red going back and forth for the incorrect answer. So after we check for everything from the host remote, the only thing that's left to check is if we're waiting for a flick from a remote. And if we are, then we check to see if the message is something from the left wand or the right wand. Then we go into a paused state so that we don't do anything else until we hear from the host remote. And then we call either the left player flick or the right player flick function. So what those do is they activate the swoosh sound pin. That one will pick a random sound effect for a spell being cast and play that. Then it will pick a random hue. So after we've picked a random color, then we'll just make the light travel from one side of the stage to the other. Hopefully that all made sense. I know that was pretty high level, but like I say, check the link in the description. You can go download this code off of GitHub and dig through it some more if you want to. All right guys, well, I think that about does it. I hope this was at least interesting. Like I say, I know that it's a project with a very specific use. 
uh, but hopefully it'll at least give you some inspiration for your own projects. I do have a couple of build videos lined up about some projects from people in the community, so stay tuned for those, and I'll see you guys next time.